Good evening, AEI Ministry, man. It's your pastor, man. Ready for Bible study again as we continue in this series on dealing with uh, the characteristics of fruitfulness and talking about fruitfulness. But tonight, we're going to talk about something that is very critical in the time and the hours that we're in right now. And that we have to be able to know the difference between the trees that are in our life. Man, I'm telling you, this is going to be good. And we are going to get a clear understanding tonight why fruitfulness is so critical because it determines the type of trees that are in your life. So tonight, I want to talk to you from a topic, it's all in the tree. It is all in the tree. So before we break the bread of life and jump into this teaching tonight, join me in a word of prayer. Oh, great and mighty God, we come to you right now. God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity. God, we thank you, God, for this platform. God, we just thank you, God. We know that you're going to show up and you're going to show out tonight. And as we prepare to go ahead and dig into your word, God, give us the divine revelation. Give us the inspiration, God. Allow this word to equip, empower, and to impact our lives, to make a difference in our life, God. Allow us to use your word, God as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path as we continue on the spiritual journey and this thing called life till we get to our eternal resting place which is in the kingdom. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen, amen. So tonight I wanna to jump right into it and I wanna go ahead and our text tonight is Matthew 7, 15 to the 20th verse. And I'll be coming from the English Standard Version. And we're going to do a little different tonight. I'm going to try to go ahead and allow the Holy Spirit to guide me tonight in exegeticizing the text to be able to give you clarity and understanding of the Scripture as we go ahead and we dig into this. The first thing I want to do is put this text into context. And, and what's really happening here is this is Jesus speaking tonight. Jesus is talking during the Sermon on the Mount. And when you're talking about Matthews, everything in this text right here, and from Matthew to 7th chapter, from the 15th to the actual 20th verse, is in red. Because this is actually Jesus speaking to a multitude of people. And what Jesus is telling them, he's giving them the characteristics and the instructions between a false teacher and a true teacher. A false prophet and a true prophet. The difference between good teaching and bad teaching. And this is very critical in the times that we're in because just because somebody sounds good, looks good, and is very articulate in their words, doesn't mean that their teaching is actually doctrine. Doesn't mean that their teaching is what is supposed to edify you and equip you. People use these 10 letter words, these 15 letter words, and, and they think that they're speaking so profound. And many people like that type of vocabulary and pronunciation. But the issue is, is that, is what they're teaching equipping you and transforming your life? And you'll find out that it's all in the tree tonight. So as we go into the first verse here, this is Jesus speaking. He says, the first thing Jesus tells us in this text tonight, he says, beware of false prophets. He's saying, who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravishing wolves. Watch this. The first thing Jesus gives us is that he's telling us to be on our on the alert because he says be aware meaning be on the lookout for who of false prophets false prophets people who teach the word of God people who uh, uh, preach the word of God people who actually tries to to, to give you different uh, doctrine of the word of God when they're saying it's sound doctrine, he says, beware of false prophets because they're going to come at you. And if you're not what I say, uh, what I say, uh, 
have studied and showed ourself approved, a workman not ashamed, right in the divine word of truth. If you're not a person who is a noble breedman, a person who has gone back and searched the scriptures and studied to be able to confirm what a person is saying, you could find yourself in a situation where you're following a cult, a Jim Jones experience. And you could deal with these different type of actual religions out there that try to tell you that it's Christianity, but it's not Christianity at all. And you have to be have an ear to hear and know what this person is saying because the Holy Spirit will quicken you to know that what you're getting isn't sound doctrine. So he says, be aware of the false prophets who come to you in what? Sheep clothing. Meaning they are going to appeal to you based off of their external, but not the internal. Meaning these people are gonna try to influence you based off of their looks, based off of what they present themselves as but not based off of what they're instructing and giving you to try to transform and change your life. So that's one of the things you got to be very careful about because they're coming at you in a, in a actual deceitful manner. And it's not about what they have in them. They're depending on what you see outside of them to be able to draw you before they take you out. So one thing you need to understand, and this is a takeaway here, that when you're dealing with false prophets, that you're dealing with someone who's all about self-gain. Self-gain. The basic fault of the false prophet is of self-interest. Okay, 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 let me go somewhere. Meaning, they desire is all about an easy life and to see what they can get from you because it's all about prestige it's all about them being honored and it's all about them and their own ideas and they're not talking about God ideas they'll be the ones who are set up there and try to come up with schemes and, and, and manners of how to manipulate people and how to raise money when the Bible gives instructions that you give tithes and you give offerings and yes you are to take care of the man of God but that's within the tithes and the offering anything extra you give is an offering that you choose to give a love offering but you're not to be getting in these ten dollar line fifty dollar line hundred dollar line and because someone comes there and they're trying to raise money and that money is where the people are manipulating the actual people of God, that false prophets are manipulating the people of God just to get paid so that they can get out of there and go and say, guess what, I went there and I raised $10,000 to put it in my pocket. Because then the people give all they got and they leave them empty because the word that they give them is such a prosperity word but it's not an edifying word that helps this person to transform and change their life. And many people will flock to certain names and big names and go and let these people try to prophesy to them, make it seem like these people are so prominent in God when all you need is the word of God in itself. And you need someone who's genuine. It's not all about money but they're all about saving souls for the kingdom. When people, when a person, you can identify a false prophet when he puts his interest, his interest above God's interest. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, to seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all the other things will be added unto. But when you have a person who's seeking all the other things added unto and putting God on the back burner, that is an indication that you need to watch that tree. It's all in the tree. And you've been, many of you have been and experienced stuff like this and seen stuff like this. This is why many people leave ministry 
because when they know better, they do better, and they realize that they've been bamboozled by a false prophet, by someone who didn't have no care, no intent for their soul, but the more they're only concerned about what they had in their pocketbooks. And that's not what we're all about in the ministry. And that's what gives people a very poor taste about Christianity. But it's not Christianity. It is those who are in Christianity that has come up with a hustle, a scheme, a way of manipulation to be able to get over on people. And that's why people get upset because they don't identify the trees that are in their life. And so they redirect the people, not to Christ, but they redirect them to themselves. And one of the things you got to be very careful about is that always defending a man or a woman of God when you're not defending the actual faith that you're part of. There's nothing wrong with saying, I love my pastor, I love my, 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 my first lady, I love my... my, my um, my members, I love my church. That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when the rubber meets the road, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because your pastor can't get you into heaven. Your church can't get you into heaven. It is your faith and your relationship that you have with Jesus that will get you into the kingdom. And so you cannot allow these people to come into your life and to manipulate you. And that's why you have to have an ear to hear in this season because they're out there. There are many false prophets out there and they will proper lie into your life constantly. They will try to milk you for a dollar. They'll try to manipulate you in every capacity. As long as they're getting money in their pocket, they don't care about what's going on in your pocket. They don't care about what's happening in your life. They have no concern. So be very careful. The first thing you need to be careful about is self gain. It's all about self interest for them. You have to look at that. Look at it very closely. The next thing it says here in the 16th, here it is. This is what Jesus said. Jesus tells you how to recognize them. And this is along with what we've been teaching for the last three, four weeks. He says, You will recognize them, here it is, by their fruits. He's telling us how to determine the difference between a false prophet and a true prophet. A false teaching and true teaching. It is all about their fruits. He says, are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So you have to understand those things are very pointy. Those things are very irritating. And so you can't get no comfortability out of those things because grapes don't grow with thorn bushes. Figs don't grow on actual thistle trees. Fig has a fig tree. Grape comes from the vine. So you have to recognize them by their fruit. Watch this. So the next thing you have to understand in reference to the actual, it's all in the tree, it's this here the lifestyle of the individual. The lifestyle matters. The lifestyle matters. Watch this. We should pay attention to the manner of living that a person who says that they're a child of God, a person who says that they are a pastor or teacher, and how they show it in front of us. Watch this. Do they show righteousness when it comes to people and when it comes to their life? Do they have a spirit of humility? Are they faithful in the way that they live? These are some of the characteristics that you need to pick up on. Because if they're not faithful, that means they're asleep with the flock. Come on. If they're not faithful, that means they manipulate folks in the flock. If they're not faithful, that means they steal money from the flock. It's all about them and not about God's people. So the manner of their living is different. We should pay attention to, watch this, 
the contents of their teaching. If they're teaching 99 or 90% about money and 10% and, 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 and about salvation, then that tells you right there that their self-interest is more about the finances. Even if a church has a financial issue, it shouldn't be taught 99% of the time. Come on. Because the good news is all about saving souls. And long as you're doing what God requires you to do, seeking Him first, then God will take care of the financial deficit that you have later. Come on. If you put God first, then the financial issues that you're worrying about will take care of itself because God will make sure he will send strangers in your life to help fix the financial burdens that your ministry may be dealing with. He will send complete strangers in your life to sow into your ministry, to sow into your life, to sow into the things that you're dealing with. That's what he would do. But if you're sitting there constantly trying to beat up the people based off of something that they don't have, then it puts a bitter taste in their mouth about what is salvation. And our job is not to beat up on God, people. Our, God, our job is to preach and teach and to lead God, people. That is the key. So what is the contents of their teaching? Matter of fact, and what is the effect of their teaching? Are people growing in Christ? Or they're being merely entertained by a word. Because many people have been entertained for so long in ministry that they don't even understand. That's why they have a bitter taste about ministry. That when a person preaches, they got to give you a ah, and they got to go off and on. They, they, they start giving their little jurgens and their little uh, theatrical uh hacking and all of that and there's nothing in that of substance i mean it's a good show it might sound good but the reality of it you're not really preaching preaching is proclaiming a word not a noise let me say it again you can say john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son who shall believe in him should not perish for everlasting life that's preaching because I just proclaim the word. You want people to understand what you're saying and they can get a better understanding so that they can live based off of what you're saying. And what you should be saying is the word of God. That's why Isaiah says the word of God goes out and not return void. What makes people grow in Christ is the word of God. It's the word of Christ. Not from what Dr. Floyd say, but what the word of God says, the holy ordinance says. When you proclaim that word, the word comes not by word only, but with power. And that's what shifts the lives of people. So when people are preaching the gospel, there's a transformation going on in their life. And then you will start seeing the effects of the teaching, the effects of the actual contents of their teaching. You'll know that it is genuine. You'll know that it is real. And you'll understand that the way they're living, their lifestyle will change because it will be conformed to the teaching and to the word of God. So you have to understand, number one, self-gain. Number two, lifestyle matters. I ain't going to keep you long tonight, but let's go to 17. It says, so every healthy tree bears good fruit. But the disease tree bears bad fruit. Watch this. When you look at a tree, it doesn't take discernment to know what the contents of it is. I, I, I'm, I'm helping someone tonight. Look, because look at verse 18. It says, a healthy tree cannot bear a bad fruit. Okay. Nor can a diseased tree bear a good fruit. The problem with people is people tell you that this is such a good church, a good person, and they're a great person or a good thing.
But when you sit there and you analyze it and you look at it, you don't see what they're saying. And that right there, don't try to make something what somebody else want it to be. I think I said something right there. Too many times we allow our relationships and our influence and affiliation with people to try to manipulate us into believing something that really isn't reality. People will tell you that this is a great person. And then when you sit there and you listen to the person, you deal with the person, you get to know the person, and you find out that there's nothing good about the individual. You find yourself being manipulated and being taken advantage of only because of your affiliation with an individual. What am I saying? If you're in a healthy ministry, you will see good things evolve in that ministry. If you're in a healthy relationship, you will see good things evolve in that relationship. If you're in a healthy job environment, you will see good things happen in that job environment. But if you're in a place that is supposed to be healthy and all you're getting is bad things, unhealthy things, and things that are not truthfully what they're supposed to represent, it doesn't take a spiritual mindset for you to determine that this isn't the right place or the right thing. All it takes is common sense and wisdom to know that it's not the right place and the right thing. Don't allow yourself to be influenced because it's all in the tree. Look at the trees in your life and I promise you, you can tell what each contents of the tree is. You can tell the trees that are promising. You can tell the trees that are always uh, trying to get over. You can look at the trees and find the ones who are always trying to get a quick way, a quick fix, or try to manipulate, or try to have their way. If you keep looking at the trees in your life, you will know by the fruit, just like Jesus says. He says, you will recognize them by their fruit. You're not to judge them but you are to be a fruit inspector. And so stop wasting your time and stuff when you know it's not fruitful. Stop trying to make things fruitful when it's not connected to the proper source. You've tried your best to make something right. And as much as you try your best to try to help a person to become a better person, to do better for themselves, you still end up getting the same type of fruit. You didn't store, you didn't, you didn't invested in people, you didn't did your best to try to help people come out of stuff. You you put so much time and effort in the individuals who have not put anything into themselves. And as the scripture says, so every healthy tree bears good fruit. But the diseased trees bear bad fruits. Why are you allowing yourself to be in a disease infected situation and expect to get something good out of it? Come on. There's no way you can get something good out of something that is bad. Because a healthy tree cannot bear any bad fruit. And as much as someone will tell you that you are bad and everything you do is good, then why you allow yourself to be beat up mentally to think that you're nothing better than good? Come on. These are the things we got to be careful about in this season. We attach ourselves to places and things and location based off of the amount of people or the amount of things. But it doesn't make it good. <laughs> it doesn't make it good. It doesn't. You have to recognize it by the fruit that it bears.
Look at the trees in your life. Some have been barren. Some trees has been fruitful. Some trees have been not, has been fake. Misrepresenting what they were really about. And you cannot have yourself in a situation, a season, to sit there and be influenced and affected by things of that magnitude. Let me see if I can close this text out, he says. He says in verse 20, as he regurgitates what he said in verse number 16, he says, every tree, in 19, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Meaning there is a time period that God is going to allow things to go. And after that, He's going to shut it down. He's going to shut some things down. There's a certain time period that God may permit things to run rapid, but sooner or later He will shut it down. Because the key to it all is that He's going to identify what the tree is all about based off of what the results of the tree growth is. So if there's nothing good, then there's no reward. There's only nothing but judgment and punishment. But if there's something good, then there's a great reward. And that is the key. So, let me see if I can close with this. Run to 1 John 3, 9, and 10. I want to give you a closing set of scriptures. It says this, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Oh God Almighty, man, that's good right there. Meaning, you can't sit there and say that you're born as a child of God and you continue to keep sinning as you weren't a child of God. It says, no one born of God, meaning that new nature makes a practice mean a lifestyle of sin for God seeds his seed abides in him meaning the seed of God lives in us so and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God when that seed is planted in you it will grow fruit that one word fruit and that fruit will have different attributes love joy peace faithfulness goodness gentleness long suffering those are the things that will come from that one fruit because that is the seed of god the fruit of the spirit which is god's seed so Here's the 10th verse. But this is but by this it is evidence who are the children of God. See that again? You saw that in the earlier part. Who are the children of God? Up here it tells you that you will recognize them by their fruit. Down here in 1 John, he says that by this it is evident who are the children of God. Who are the children of God? The one who will not practice sinning. What God sees abide in them. They cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Meaning their lifestyle has changed. So you're not living that old lifestyle no longer. You're living a godly, a holy lifestyle. By this it is evidence who are the children of God. Here it is. And who are the children of the devil. There it is. You got those who are children of God. You got those who are children of the devil. There's some people who are still the devil's children. And there are some people who are the children of God. The one who will continue to practice sinning is a child of the devil. The one who doesn't and turned away from it is now a child of God. Watch this. 
whoever does not practice righteousness, doing the right thing, is not of God. Lord have mercy. Nor is, here it is, the one who does not love his brother. You cannot sit here and say you love God who you have never seen but hate your brother and your sister who you see. How can you say you're a child of God when you don't like people that God created in his own image? How can you say you're a child of God and you want to go to a place called heaven where there's nothing but people going to be in heaven? So you have to understand this teaching tonight that is all in the tree. That is very critical of the fruit that we bear. No, you're not the judge and condemn folks. But in this season we're in right now, it is very important that you pay attention to the fruit of the tree. Recognize it. Identify it and, and 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 actually examine it and 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 wonder what the interest is all about. It doesn't take discernment to know what you see on a tree. It doesn't take discernment for you to see how a person is living, how a person conduct themselves, how a person treat other people. All it takes is you have a set of eyes and a set of ears. And you sit there and you look and you watch and you can see that it's all in the tree. Man, God bless you tonight, man. A different style of teaching, I wanted to break it down to you. Because many people are just talking about different types of religion and what is true doctrine and what is false doctrine. And we got to start pulling people in now in this season to let them understand what this is really about that you play a major part in this and you can't start selling for stuff when you know it's not genuine it's not real you can't just start attaching yourself to stuff when you know it's not what it's supposed to be so take this word tonight hide it into your heart go back and study it for yourself research it and if there's any questions, bring it up. We can have dialogue about it. But I just think that this is the teaching that God has given for me to you tonight for Bible study. And he said that it's all in the tree. Don't be that naive that you sit there and you look past the trees that are in your life, man. So God bless you, man. I love you, man. I'll see you soon. And we look forward for actual service on Sunday. We'll have virtual service. We'll also have in-person service. We expect everyone to come out and attend in person. As we go ready and we get prepared for the actual Thanksgiving, we want to make sure that we get everything in line and get everything uh, together for us to be able to move forward in that vein. So if this teaching bless you tonight and you want to sow into this ministry, into good ground, a place where it has interest in building the kingdom, you can go, as our information come up, you can go ahead and give pass, pass their cash app or via PayPal as our information comes up on the screen. Not only that, as we know, the 14th of November is approaching us. As we know, that's our giveaway. As I say, if you have anything you want to bring in, and you can go ahead and bring it in on this Sunday coming up so we can go ahead and get everything together so we prepare for the 14th as we give that stuff away to those people who are in need. So we love you, man, First Lady and me. We love you, man. I thank you for your attendance. I thank you for your time. And always remember that it's all in the tree. Jesus was telling them, you got to be careful what you're listening to. You got to be careful who you're listening to. And you got to look at what people are trying to tell you to do, man. It's all in the tree, man. God bless you, man. I love you, man. And guess what? We will see you again. Share this word.